Hello, my name is Michael Vigent and I am the CEO of Great Blue Research and I would like to take this opportunity to thank the folks from the town of Greenwich for once again conducting this resident satisfaction survey. During today's presentation, we'll do a little bit about Great Blue, talk a little bit about the project overview, take you through some key study findings, as well as next steps and recommendations. At Great Blue, since 1979, our goal has been to harness the power of data to help our clients achieve their organizational goals. It's about understanding the data that is out there to support insights for the organization as well as what to do next uh, with the data, driving solutions, strategic actions, as well as improving upon services delivered to your residents and local businesses. Part of how we do this is through a variety of different methodologies, ranging from in-depth interviews, telephone surveys, digital surveys, focus groups, in-depth interviews, as well as journey mapping. Now let's dive into the project overview. First and foremost, we were commissioned by the town of Greenwich to conduct this 2021 resident satisfaction survey. Uh, this is a tracking survey to surveys that were conducted in 2014, 2016, as well as 2018. Importantly, readers should note that the survey uh, was originally going to be conducted in 2020, but was put on hold, uh, rightly so, due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, that being said, few things have changed uh, since the, the pandemic um, hit us and, and started to impact. And, and, and the real big impact there is what's happened inside of the telephone surveying world or methodology, if you will. Just to give you a little bit of, of, of insight into that, in 2018, one in, one, one in every 51 telephone calls resulted in a completed survey. So one in 51 calls resulted in a completed survey. And that takes into account busy signals, uh, those who pick up and terminate and all that sort of stuff. But one in 51 calls resulted in a completed survey. In 2021, that number jumped to one completed survey in every 247 calls. So this is not new or unique to Greenwich. This is something that is happening nationally. It's something that we're seeing in all the work that we are doing and in talking with our partners. Uh, our numbers are consistent with what others are experiencing in the in the industry on the telephone side. So want to make that uh, aware to you because that has an impact. Uh, it also results in why we captured uh, more Digital surveys this go around. You also collected digital surveys in the last go around. Um, but now, what has also happened in a good way is that digital surveying has become much more reliable and we are seeing a greater inclusion of other demographic profiles, predominantly the under 55 crowd. So now you start to see some expectation changes. You start to better capture um, the folks that, that you know may not answer that phone call. And so we are seeing that proportionality. Importantly, as a result of all of that, uh, we did utilize uh, what is called an RIM uh, or raking weighting process, which allowed us to go in on a variety of different variables and factors and those factors were we, we conducted the weighting based on 50% phone, 50% digital, so we didn't give any um, extra weighting to either one of those methodologies. We wanted them both uh, to come across evenly. Uh, we also broke those down by zip code uh, in alignment with census information, as well as income, ethnicity, and gender to make sure that those, uh, those weighted averages or those weighted data uh, was consistent with previous studies. So although there is more digital in the 2021 survey, uh, we are not seeing uh, major shifts in the demographics that were captured. So uh, these really are apples to apples um, comparisons. So, um, and, and much like outdoor dining for restaurants and remote work for businesses, uh, the pandemic really forced the survey industry to adapt and modernize and improve through, through this dual methodology fielding and analysis. And, and what we're really finding, and you'll see this throughout, uh, is, is a new understanding of the audiences that you're serving as opposed to just predominantly being um, those folks that have had that relationship with the town, uh, your over 65 crowd, homeowners, a bit more stable in their finances and things of that nature. So uh, important. Now, what we did see 
uh, which is also pretty common with most of the survey work that we've been doing lately, is we have seen that general satisfaction uh, has been down across most of the categories since the last survey, uh, predominantly town services, police, fire, public schools, investment of tax dollars. Uh, and again, in that unweighted data analysis, general satisfaction was lower in both the average phone survey responses as well as the online survey responses. I'll talk to this in a moment. Uh, lower satisfaction, as I mentioned earlier, isn't unique to Greenwich. We are seeing this nationally. Um, and there, in, in that lower satisfaction by about two or three, uh, in some cases four percentage points, has been, uh, has been that national trend. I think it's really more important, instead of looking at the 20 21 data as being a couple of points down from what you saw in 2018, you're going to see lots of evidence that the 2021 numbers are consistent with what we saw in 2014 as well as 2016, indicating that the 2018 data may be a bit more of an outlier. And then secondly, I also ask you to view this 2021 data as a new benchmark. And this is the same uh, the, the, the same message that we are uh, and recommendation that we're giving to all of our clients right now because in the survey research world things did change so dramatically uh, as a result of COVID. Uh, there's no sense in beating yourself up over any any movements in, in the numbers. Really view these numbers as a new shift or a new benchmark which is now better including some of those younger audiences. All right so let's jump into some of the key study findings at this point in time. As you'll see in each of these slides, the first slide in a segment, in this particular case, general satisfaction, we're going to show you the 2014, 16, 18, and 21 data side by side. As you'll see on the right side of each grouping is that gray bar, and that represents your 2021 data. And this is talking about general satisfaction scores uh, for each of the following town services whether it's police, fire, public school, or investment of tax dollars. And again, you'll see kind of across the board uh, that alignment with what we saw in 2014 and 2016. And then the second slide in each progression will be um, breaking down each of these groups in the phone versus online data set. So uh, again, I think that the big takeaway here is, you know, uh, each of these numbers is, is, is fairly in alignment um, up a little bit or down a little bit from what we saw in 2014 and 2016 and 2018, kind of across this whole entire grouping of, of questions or this survey uh, is, is a bit more of the outlier. Breaking down the phone versus digital for general satisfaction. Again, it is not uncommon to see digital slightly lower, and these are all means that we're talking about here. Um, it's not uncommon and it, it's actually expected to see the mean slightly lower for your digital as opposed to phone. Uh, again, because you're seeing a more predominant proportion of younger folks, and in, in this case, we'll call it the under 65 crowd, um, is, is, has a little different expectations. And so um, they tend to rate a few percentage points lower than their phone counterparts, which tend to be folks who are a little more settled um, and even in some cases in the, in the retired mode. So there's just a difference of audiences here. So nothing um, to get really worked up about, just understanding from a benchmark perspective, this is just a new way to look at the data. And many of the same storylines as we go through the different um, service departments. So this grouping is based on importance of. So we see almost increases across the board uh, compared with the 2014, 2016, particularly in the building category, as well as inland. Uh, we saw parks and rec drop just a little bit below uh, in addition to highway and then planning and zoning um, significantly higher than what we saw in 2016, slightly higher than 2014, but really consistent with what we saw in 2018. So again, just trying to get everybody to look at. Now, because we made a bigger push digitally, you're going to start to see that the 2021 numbers, that N value is the number of completed surveys or actual surveys in this particular grouping. So 165 more completed surveys than what we saw in uh, 2018. Moving along, so this on a seven point scale where one represented not at all important and seven represented extremely important in the, in the green, the dark green, what you're looking for here is predominance of dark green, 
light green and that blue color. And as you'll see kind of across all four of these groupings, that's where the importance level stays. If there was very small levels of importance, then we'd say, okay, if the ratings are down, uh, it's largely because there's, there's not as much importance placed on this particular department. But in, in this case, uh, including Parks and Rec, which showed the greatest level of importance kind of across the board, um, the green, the light green, and the blue bars really are those seven, six, and five ratings on the scale of importance versus the gray, red, and orange, which is you know kind of the not at all important grouping, and then your yellows being your neutrals. Here's one of those areas from a building inspection division, uh, particularly in the case of accuracy. This is where we, we start to see uh, a little bit of a jump um, above the 2018 numbers, but you do see a little bit of a, of a scale across the board here. And one thing that I'd like to bring to your attention, particularly for 2016, 18, and 21, your sample sizes are, are, are below 100, in this case 51, 50, and 69 respectively. So the margin for error or the ratings can jump a little bit more dramatically just because there's fewer cases. But we did see accuracy score the greatest rating for 2021 out of these four areas for the building inspection vision. Again, breaking it down phone versus online. This is one of those instances where you do see some pretty dramatic differences. Uh, as you look at accuracy, for example, 52.6% of your phone respondents reported uh, accuracy was you know, extremely important versus only 19.2 of your of your digital. And again, this is just some different thought process and how they how they look at each of these characteristics and what's important your digital audience is going to be a little bit more likely to self-serve. Therefore, a little lack of accuracy is not as important um, as, you know, perhaps having help available when and if they need it on the phone side. Planning and zoning department, once again, uh, as we break this down, so here are four different areas. Uh, we do see another increase over the 2018 in the area of help. Uh, but once again, just want to remind folks, smaller end values of numbers here. So some of these ratings can, can really dramatically shift. Uh, information rated the lowest um, at 3.44 in a mean average value there. Continuing on the planning and zoning department, phone versus digital. Again, you start to see some of those, not as much of a difference in the time category, um, but we see a little bit more dramatic difference in, in the help category. Uh, those on the phone side, 38.9% say help is extremely important, whereas only 16.7 reported the same on the digital side. So um, continuing on, inland wetland, inland wetland and watercourse agencies, um, again, can't stress enough being mindful of these end values when you start to see these charts and graphs that have a, a little bit bigger span or difference in the in the ratings you should automatically think wow i'm seeing a big difference in the ratings uh let me first look at the end values and with only 18 people in your data set uh one or two people providing a a, a, a two value as opposed to a seven value can really drive uh, that number differently. So small numbers here, but in this particular case, for this uh, this grouping, we saw three out of the four areas measured saw increases over all of the previous years, with only info um, being the the one exception there. And again, I think 2018 was an outlier here at that 5.34, because you see the 4.09 for information is is slightly above, but also in alignment with what we saw in 14 and 16. As we break it down, phone versus digital, we're seeing a bit more of the same. Um, from an accuracy perspective, your phone folks want to see that total accuracy um, is, is, is extremely important to them, whereas it's kind of across the board in, in the digital side. And, and I think it's important um, as you look at the, the 27.8 in, in accuracy or the 37.5 in information, you know, this digital audience is, is a bit more self-service, so they're finding more of that information on their own, thus why it's not as important to them. If you didn't have that information available, they might rate you poorly for it, but if the information is available, they'll find it, they'll seek it out. Highway division. Uh, we had two new categories, uh, frequency and convenience. Um, so that's why you don't see in a historical 
um, comparison data points, but, but very similar story to what we're seeing. Consistency with 14 and 16, uh, slightly lower than what we saw in 2018. You start to see now in the highway division, there's not as much difference between the phone and the online. You're starting to see that grouping come back together. Now we had two different groupings for Parks and Rec. The first was on Recreation Passes. The second grouping will be on sites and uh, we'll, be, we'll be wrapping up here shortly and, and open up uh, any questions that folks might have. Uh, but when we look at recreation passes and we take a look at time, accuracy, help, and information, um, you saw some slight declines in the areas of help and info compared to previous years. You saw a slight increase for accuracy compared against 16 and 14. Uh, again, consistent message uh, against what we're seeing in 2018, but then you did see uh, a, a pretty sizable increase in time to achieve that recreation pass as compared to uh, 14 and 16. So these are all strong numbers when you're looking at uh, that scale of 1 to 7, so uh, really good ratings here, and these are satisfaction as opposed to importance, so 5.34, 5.65, 5.92, and 5.63 respectively on satisfaction for these four areas. Again, the, the, the gapping or the grouping of, of satisfaction for both phone and online, largely living in that five, six, and seven rating for each of the four services measured. So pretty strong ratings across the board there. Last little group here is the recreation sites where we saw Time, maintenance, help, and info, once again, being those characteristics that we're measuring. And this is, uh, again, a satisfaction rating. So you see pretty strong consistency across all four grouping, with information being that one area being rated uh, slightly lower as compared to previous years, uh, 5.26 as opposed to 5.46, 5.55, and 5.90, respectively, in that uh, info category. But the other three areas pretty consistent across the board um, with 2018 remaining as that outlier. Last but not least, as we look at the recreation sites, again, strong groupings of seven, six, and five being that uh, extremely satisfied number seven as opposed to um, not at all satisfied number one. You see very small numbers there. So across the board, um, really strong numbers. We did see some new benchmark areas. Uh, for our different data points uh, across this survey. And this leads us kind of nicely into um, some of our recommendations moving forward. So what are the next steps? Um, the next steps is various departments inside of the town will review the results of the survey, uh, including the responses to the open-ended questions that have pr been provided to your team. Uh, you will identify the key elements that are prioritized by residents and affect their quality of life uncover any opportunities to impro improve town services based on this review, and then implement strategies to increase residential satisfaction. Um, as it has been said before, but I will reiterate, Great Blue is available after these formal presentations to work with the town of Greenwich and, and, and the project personnel in this particular case to make sure that you're understanding where these opportunities are. So we don't just drop this report on you and say, here you go, good luck. We work with you as a partner to ensure that um, the information that has been provided is understood. Everybody's understanding the story that is coming out of the data in the same way. But then we're also answering questions for you uh, to make sure that there's there's no unclear direction coming out of, uh, of this survey. So we're here for you after this presentation uh, to help you as you see fit. So what are some of the what are some of the recommendations that we have? Um, now is the time, as, as I mentioned earlier, as a result of COVID and a result of the, the various impacts that COVID had on survey methodology on how we're collecting data, how people are answering data, and the, and the different level of expectations that they're, that they're now carrying into these surveys. Now's the time, if you so desire, to consider adding or revising any of the town departments or the characteristics rated. So uh, in, in layman's term, if you want to add some questions or change some questions or delete some questions, now's the time to do that because you're really working off of a new benchmark for this data as opposed to looking at it of, geez, we dropped a couple of percentage points here. Um, 
Also, what has changed from an inclusivity standpoint is, is the way in which we're, we're asking uh, respondents to report their gender, whereas historically for, for decades it's, it's been as simple as male-female, whereas now it's not that simple. Um, there's many more categories um, so that folks can really jot down how they identify, um, how they report, their gender, uh, whether it is um, non-binary, identifying as, um, prefer not to answer. So our recommendation would be so that you're in, in, in better alignment with how folks are answering that question to include multiple categories um, for the gender uh, category moving forward. Now, that will mean for one year you won't be able to do apples to apples weighting in comparison on, on gender, but it will be a much more uh, reflective understanding of your population and how they identify. From a fielding methodology standpoint, um, moving to an online digital survey, it makes the most sense. Some folks may ask, well, if we're getting that older population in the phone, why would we want to get rid of it? And the reason being is you're getting the responses in that over 65 category by digital as well, and that will only continue to increase. Um, so from a standpoint of budget compared to um, what you're getting for that budget, you will end up spending more the longer you stick to phone digital and you won't necessarily get more. Whereas online digital, you can get more and spend less and there's no longer a question of reliability based on the proportionality that we're now seeing in digital versus what we didn't see in proportionality in digital pre-COVID. So COVID on the digital methodology standpoint had a positive impact on seeing the data reliability increase significantly. We also have the ability in that digital to, to um, send it out via email. We can also send it out via text survey. Um, if we are sticking with a phone methodology, using all these different digital efforts, we can provide a phone number and folks could actually take the survey by phone utilizing an IVR technology or interactive voice response is what that, what that means. Um, residents can call a number and go through the voice automated survey if they don't want to do it digitally. Um, so there are still some phone options, but we want to make sure that we keep alignment between your budget as well as your survey needs. Um, and the reality is, is we don't have the need to do phone to keep you in alignment uh, any, any longer. Uh, but as I started to mention, um, text surveying is, is also very applicable. We're also seeing a, a comeback to uh, a, you know, an older methodology, which was um, printing and mailing, uh, whereas now we're not sending you the whole survey and asking you to circle responses. We send you a postcard with a QR code on it, and you hover your phone or tablet over that QR code, and it brings the survey up, and you can answer it uh, online doing that. Um, so there's a variety of different ways to, to capture the surveys, all keeping budget in mind. Um, but then it also, from a demographic detail, we also get all of that demographic detail. No matter which of these methodologies we are using, we'll have the ability to capture that information for you and make sure that we continue to have the ability to weight your data if need be so that we are re really looking at apples to apples comparisons from one year to the next. From an implementation date, uh, there was some discussion about conducting the next resident satisfaction survey in the fall of 2023 with a recommended fielding start date of October 1st 2023. So uh, with that being said, uh, we've put up the four key players. Uh, again, I'm Michael Vigent, CEO of Great Blue Research. Uh, Dan Quattricelli, our senior uh, research director, as well as Courtney Cardillo, our data analyst, and Taylor Foss, our key project manager. On behalf of our team, I want to thank you very much for your business and the ability to serve the town of Greenwich. And all of our contact information is on the screen here, uh, and we welcome any uh, calls or emails and questions that you have about this data. Thank you very much. I wish everybody a great day and stay self safe and healthy.